let me go here and start sharing my screen, entire screen here. Okay. Gasper, can you see it? Yeah, looks, okay. looks good. Perfect. So um, I'll start first by turning on modeler and let me just clean up this text here because this is what you typically start with when you open up SketchUp. So right now what I'll do is I'll go to add location because I want to also bring in some data uh, into it. So let's go to Manhattan, New York. And maybe not, maybe we can go to some location here. Obviously, maybe here there is a park, so uh, a parking. So maybe we can take this as a location to develop something. So I'll just start by um, selecting the provider also and try with something like that. <clears throat> I'll just import the location. Now, the first thing that I want to do is I want to add some uh, context to this site so that I have a feeling of what is it that is surrounding this area where we want to design something. Um, to do so, I'll just go to File and download OpenStreetMap 3D Buildings, which we have here. Um, and this is basically, it's close to what Placemaker does in case you know it, uh, but it's it's a simplified version. It just brings you the data uh, the building's data in so that you have some context and the feeling of the size of the buildings that are surrounding our site. So, uh, and this is actually put to a separate layer. I'll go here to show tray and we have it on a separate layer now. But what I want to also do is maybe get rid of the, this uh, small buildings here because this is the site we are going now to use as our example. Um, okay, so we are ready. Of course, if you have the data like the GIS even or some DXF files or something like that, you can, of course, bring that one also into, uh, into SketchUp and start working from there. But I'm showing how you can start working even from scratch. So the first thing that I'll do is I will just go and outline this city block. So right now um, it will be a bit rough. Of course, if I had more time, I could be more precise and, or even as I said, I could maybe even go in and and uh, um, bring in the DXF data uh, that would actually match it even better. But for, for this exercise, it's good enough. So now I have created a flat face. And now the next thing that I want to do is I want to convert it to a city block because this will then give me the information about the floor area ratio, site coverage, and all other parameters that are important. To do so, I will just click on the fourth icon here, which is create city block. Okay, we have our city block created. Now you can see this flickering. Uh, this is because both this, this sit, new city block and the satellite image, they are on the same plane. So what I'll do is I will just unlock the satellite image and bring it 0 0.1 meter down so that uh, I get rid of this flickering, but still they are close enough that, that uh, at this scale, uh, it all looks good. And then I'll just go back and lock it so that it's not movable. And I can also go and lock my imported buildings so that I don't erase them by accident. Okay, any questions so far? And yeah, I, I didn't mention that. Um, if you have any questions, Gaspar is here to monitor them and he will stop me and I can go into some more details of the things that I'm showing. So if you have anything that you want to ask, just uh, type it into the chat window and and I will, I will try to answer it as we go. Uh, otherwise, we will have uh, at the end of, of the webinar, we will have about 10 minutes to answer any other details that you might be interested in. Okay, Gaspar, do we have some questions? No, not, not so far. Not so far, okay, good. So now that we have our city block, we will start populating it 
by uh, with uh, building. So first thing that I'll do is I will just go here and start creating some of the floor plans of the buildings. I maybe want to align them with the city block here. So I'll do something like that. And just to, to quickly start them, I will just select the building and duplicate it a few times. So let's go here, divide by four, divide by four, actually three, seems better. And now I will, I, uh, still keeping this building selected, I will just click here on the create building button. Now, this will instantly convert these uh, faces into modular buildings. You can see that the city block became red, and this is because uh, we are already violating one of the rules of the city blocks. When I created the city block, I didn't set any of the rules. So maybe now is the time that I do that. Let's say for this part, we have the FAR limitation three. This is why the permitted FAR is now exceeded. So, and now when I've changed it to FAR three, it's not uh, red anymore, meaning that there is no violation uh, at this point. Now, if I go here and change this building's height, again, we see that another one pops up, which is the permitted building height. Again, this one was not uh, was not set. It was the default, which can always be changed, but uh, let's go here and just fix it manually. So now this one is also good in these terms. Of course, the zoning regulations are, are usually those that define these rules. So we are not just allowed to change them the way I'm doing it right now, but this is just to fix the model. Uh, ideally, what you would have is the GIS data, like the shape files or, or GeoJSON, and then bring it in. And then once you are bringing in this data, you can map it so that once the city block is generated from the shape file, if it contains the information about these limitations, <clears throat> Uh, you can import it also. And actually, I will show you more at the end of this call how this can be done. Right now, we have a few buildings here and we can just start working. So uh, first thing that I'll do is I'll just uh, talk a bit about the modeling capabilities and then we'll go uh, over to the data. So, and what I want to also do is I'll go here to save as New York. Let's go, we have a new New York, yes. Obviously, I was working it on it also previously, but it was location near the JFK, I believe. Um, okay, so we have a, a simple buildings here. So these are the buildings that only contain one land use. Uh, and as you can see, the, the modeler is completely integrated with SketchUp. So I can go here, select the scale tool, and as I scale the building up, it adds the floors to it. If I scale it down, it removes the floors. If I change the width of the building, you can see the numbers here, the built up area, gross floor area is updating. Okay. Meaning that I could even go here and say this can building. I, yeah. So can you change to Imperial? Uh, yeah, of course. I can switch to Imperial. I can go here to options and change from meters to feet. And then instantly this will change to, to Imperial numbers. But since I'm more used to working with uh, meters, I will switch it back. But yeah, you can do it here in units. Okay, so now if I want to get the building to some specific size, so let's go here. Now it's not really rounded, but let's go with 1,200 square meters. I can do that. Obviously it didn't change much the building because the it, it's not noticeable visually but actually now the building is 1,200 meters uh, of the of built up area. If, go, if I just type in something larger, you can see that uh, modeler automatically adjusts the building so that I can actually get to, to the value that I need it to be. Um, now, another thing that you can do here is also type in the numbers number of, of stories. So if I go here, eight, you can see that uh, new stories are added. So this way you can quickly uh, define what are actually the number of stories that you want to add to the building. And then you have the option to define first and other story height. So if I go here to 12, you can see that the first story becomes 12 meters 
and then other stories i can go just with one just for exaggerate a bit to to show you the capabilities and then another thing that you can do is if you want to sync both first and other stories you have here a shortcut which is you just click on you just enter the the field and type s which will bring the the sync command uh into play and then if i go here to let's go four you will see that both first and other stories are of the same size i will just switch them back to the defaults so they are the same for for the complete building so these are basically the the tools that you have or functions that you have to to modify specific building but now right now all of all three all four buildings here they are just a a simple building containing just one use and they are not really very interesting so maybe i can play around and and create something that is a a, a bit more playful uh something like that maybe okay just create something and then we are creating some open spaces here uh and for this building uh let's convert it to or or uh extend it to to so that it will become a mixed use building so right now what i'll do is i will i will just pick it of course i could also go here and and create another one on top of it and then merge it but I just want, in this case, I just want to use the copy command, uh, have it aligned nicely with this one. And actually what I'll do is maybe I'll create two towers on top of this one. So something like that. Right now, all all of the these buildings are separate entities, but they, still they contain the same use. So what I want to do now is I want to change some of the uses of this building. So what I'll do is I will select this bottom building and let's say, let's say that i want to change this one to service um, and then let's say that this part and actually what i want to do is i want to make it uh, a bit taller uh, uh, make, make them a bit taller so for this one let's say that we want to have this one to be an office tower and this one a hotel right now when i go here and try to change that you can see that there is no land use that would define the hotel right or the office so what i'll go what i'll do is i'll go to the land use pick service as my as my starting point i will extend it a bit here and then i'll go to add and i'll add office change the color so that it can e uh, easy be uh, distinguished also visually and then i'll hit add okay and right now what happened is modeler copied service land use definition to office land use here we can see that now we have an office land use also and now one thing to note with modeler is that we use the land use term both for in in traditional planning terms meaning that it is assigned to the city blocks or the zones and it is also assigned to the buildings this is to keep things a bit more simple that's why you have here also some of the definitions of how these land uses once applied to the buildings uh, affect the calculation. So right now the office says uh, one office on average is 15 square meters uh, of size. So I'll change this one to 25 square meters. And typically there are, let's say three employees per office. So, and then I could also change some other parameters such as uh, required parking space per uh per gross floor area or in this case let's actually change this one uh to be dependent on the office so right now when i switched it it just recalculated so that the numbers remain the same but let's say for each office we need to provide 1.5 parking spaces and then the numbers here would be i don't know maybe 800 or 1000 uh square uh, euros per square meters and then 1600 would be an income this is just to give us some estimation of what the cost of the building would be and potential revenue so right now i've defined the office land use and i also said that i want to add a hotel so for the hotel again i'll just start with an office and then i will edit a blue color let's say something like that 
and here then I will switch also the primary and secondary units so that it will the display here will not talk about offices anymore but about the rooms and guests so I'll go here to and switch this to room I could also change to something else in this case I'll go to room and then to guests and let's say the average size of the room now is okay but maybe it only has two guests and let's say this one is a bit more expensive and then here and maybe for the hotel we just need 0 0.5 parking space per per each room okay so now i'll go back here and now that i have defined the land uses i will also apply them to the to the building so this one we said uh, let's go with the hotel it changes the use and for this one i will switch it to the office tower so you can see that they are actually different colors and uh, yeah, they have different numbers coming out of them. But still right now, if I go and check what is the story height, this one says eight, but it's on top of four stories. So what I need to do is I need to merge these three buildings that I have just created into a single building so that it will, it will be represented as one building and it will show me, for example, uh, what is the total number of stories to do so. I will just select them and click on the third button here, which is create complex building. Okay, now this merged it, merged it to a single building and now it shows correctly, it is 12 stories high, right? And now if I change this number of stories to let's go in this case to six, because it's half of it, you will see that each part will be half lower than it is. This is because now modeler remembered the ratio of these different parts. And now whenever I change the size of the building, uh, it tries to match this ratio uh, as it was when we created the building. So if I go to 15, you will see that one story is added to this one and two stories to these two towers. Of course, towers do not need to be of the same height. They can be also something like that. And that's completely fine. And you have all now within this, complex building, you still have all the possibilities to modify just the parts of the building. And even if I go here now, for example, and lower this one, you will see that once I release the, the scale button, the upper buildings will adapt to it automatically. Or if I go a bit higher, again, they will adapt. So modeler makes sure that buildings stack nicely one on top of the another, okay? Then the last one that I have here in case that I wanted to have it some something like that, or actually maybe it will be better uh, just before we me... have a question. Yeah. From uh, is this also how you change the land use by floor use? Uh, mm -hmm. By uh, so yeah yeah exactly. So if you want to have just uh, let's say one one floor of office and then on top of it you want to have something else. You just want to change this one to uh, one story, and then on top of it, I will just copy it and change it to let's go maybe with let's go with residential. And yeah, so this way you can you can quickly modify the just on a on a story level. And actually, what you can see here, um, you can then have mix of different uses on the same story. Okay, and let's go with this one here. Um, and this is also not just the way to change the, the uses on a floor base, but this way you can also change the height of the stories on, a, on, a, on different levels. So let's go with this one and say, actually, this one uh, shouldn't be just three stories high, but actually we want to make it a uh, double story, right? So this is something that you can also do. Okay, and, and, and it, it functions quite well. Okay, I hope this answered the question. Gasper, please monitor if, if there is something more related to this and I will return back to it. In the meanwhile, I will just show you also uh, the, the slicer tool. So let's go with something like that and let's see. So now we have something that doesn't really match well with the... Um, with the outline of the city block. So what I can do is I can always go and enter this group, which represents a simple building and just 
move move the edge of it. So let's go with something like that. Um, and of course, I could also go here and maybe add additional line here so that it follows it better. Or alternatively, what I could also do is, uh, whichever you find faster, sometimes it might be useful to use this slicer tool, which will just cut the building in two. So I can do also something like that whichever you feel is easier for you. Now, it always splits the building in two parts, and then it's up to you if you want to create now a tower from this, or in this case, I just want to, to, to remove it. Okay, good. So, so far we've been mostly looking at the modeling capabilities, and maybe here we want to have some space, something like that, like a nice loggia in here. Uh, when when there is some rain, people still can enjoy some open air here in, in this area. Okay, so um, now we've been, so far we've been looking just at the modeling capabilities and assigning the users. Now let's move on to the data, right? So um, you have a few options on how you can, how you can see the data in Modeler. One that is maybe the most handy is here in the heads up display, how we call it, in, in the left, uh, upper corner directly inside the window, uh, you can always go uh, and pick the basic option, which will just give you the basic information and you have the full. And now, as you can see here, my text really doesn't look well. If this happens also on your screen, sometimes this happens, sometimes doesn't. It depends on the graphics card and so on. What you can do is you can just select it because basically this is just a SketchUp text. It's It's an object. So you can select it and you can change the font. And this makes it a lot easier to read, right? So right now you can see that uh, this is the data that is coming out of my model. As I said, basic, and then we can go with full. Now, what you can see is it gives me the assessed investment, the income, it gives me the required parking spaces, uh, building height, gross floor area of the complete building, and in here when I have when I have the complex building, it also gives me the ratio of different uses within this building, right? And now when whenever I change something, uh, let's go here and just change it for two stories because this will change the the ratio here. If I go to 12, you can see the ratio now has been changed, and the same happens if I enter the building and just change it. Now, right now what you can see is, now this text is a bit dimmed because I'm inside the group. Right now, what it shows me is, it shows me this data a bit differently because now inside the building, I'm selecting specific buildings. And when I'm selecting a specific simple buildings, it gives me the count of these units that we have previously defined here in the land use. So in the hotel, it gives me the number of rooms and guests. And as you can see here, this room, de 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 these numbers depend on the definition of the land use. So if my room of was of 20 square meters on average, I would have in this tower like 190 rooms almost. If it was 15 square meters, it, was, it would be 250. If it's a bit more luxurious, like on average 25 square meters, I would have 150 rooms, uh, estimated, of course. Um, okay, but when when I when I'm inside a uh, when I'm just not selecting anything, I'm just inside the group. It again gives me the ratio of these different uses that I have inside my my complex building. Okay. Hope it all makes sense. Gasper, can you confirm it? Are there any questions? Okay, while I wait for Gasper to give me some questions, if there are some, I will just continue. I will move this one back to basic and I will switch over also to the city block survey because this is also the data that is very important when it comes to, to uh, uh, matching the regulations of the city or the zoning ordinance because right now we can see for for example for this city block far right now is 1.56 uh, so meaning that if we we are allowed to build 
uh, up to three, we are actually now missing some of the possible FAR. So what I'll do is I will try to get to the maximum extent of FAR by right now, just to make it quick, just by changing the heights of these buildings, because now I'm at 2.53. Um, if I go and make them one story higher, let's see what happens. Uh, nine, 10. Now I'm just exceeding it just a bit. So right now I'm, I'm where I shouldn't be because this is not allowed. So what I can do is right now, I will just make these two buildings a bit smaller. So I, I'll try with 590. Uh, now we are at the edge. So yeah, we could, we could go and try to, to really maximize it to get to the, to the closest where it can be. So something like that, it's really, maybe there is a square meter or two meters that are, that are still left to, to get there. But in terms of the gross floor area and allowed floor area ratio, we are now at the limit. Okay. Now what I can still do is if I don't like the shapes of these buildings, what I'll do is I will just go here and switch, keep built area scaling when scaling buildings manually, because what this will do is when I'll scale the building in one direction, modeler will automatically adjust it in another so that it will keep its area and effectively it will keep also the floor area ratio, right? So now whenever I scale the building, something like that, maybe it can be a bit narrower or even for the residential uh, buildings, usually we know what are the desired depths. And right now it's 14 meters, which is, which is uh, yeah, almost perfect. Uh, so, and I'll, I'll also make this one like 14 meters, just start scaling it and I'll type in 14 M, press enter. And we have two buildings that are now 14 meters wide. Um, so they are appropriate for to, to become a kind of residential building. I will just uh, align them to, to this, uh, something like that. Yeah, okay. And let's say, okay, it's not the best design right now, but still showing, I'm, I'm trying to show you the capabilities and the, the power of having these real-time data calculations available here at all times. Okay, now uh, another way of seeing the data, and then you have the option to check the data for the for the plot area. Now, what this one shows is basically your complete model. Right now, we have uh, we have only one city block. So maybe what I'll do is in this case because now Erne, we yeah. have a question here, yeah, but I think you'll answer it. Uh, just to clarify, this calculate the far of all buildings on the site or the far of an in individual building. So it's far based on all buildings that are on specific city block. I'm just getting into it because right now you can see the whole plot has the same numbers that are coming from the city block. This is because right now we only have one city block uh, defined. So what I'll do is I will go here uh, into the city block, remember these values, because I will just get rid of this city block right now. Um, I'll uh, actually, I'll go and explode it. And right now you can see that the whole plot area uh, is, is gone. We have the totals of the gross floor area, but the FAR is not calculated anymore. This is because right now we don't have uh, uh, any uh, definition of what is the total area. Uh, so what I'll do is I will just split this one to two areas. Okay, so I'll, I'll make it something like that. And maybe even we actually want to create some uh, connection here. So I'll just remove this one. Oh, what is this? Let me check. Um, Okay, shouldn't be here. So, uh, because what I want to do now is I want to create two separate city blocks so that it will be clear how it is regarding the um, calculations. So this one is like three and then 
for this one we've set it to 60 meters so it's okay for this one now we can see the far of this one actually is exceeded right now the far of this city block is 3.44 so meaning that i need to make the building a bit smaller maybe to let's go eight and hit enter maybe nine will be okay yeah it's a bit above i can go to to type in the numbers to get again to the values that would still be allowed now we are close to there uh, two more iterations and we would have the the exact number so uh but right now i just want to move on uh and i will also move these two buildings a bit in something like that so it is still good and right now what you can see uh the far of of this city block is 2.97 uh, so again it's close to where it can be i can maybe scale this one a bit up um ah even if i scale it now this way i still have this one locked so it doesn't change the actual uh area so i'll just turn it off and scale it like that and see yeah now we are exceeding it a bit so let me go back to something like that and now we are at far 3.0 for for this city block here while this one here yields 2.96 so each city block now gives me the information about about itself so if I go here to full, you can see what are the total numbers. So here we have only one use, which is the residential. Uh, for this city block, only the residential use is assigned to this building. So maybe not the, the best one. What I should do is maybe change it here from residential to, let's go with office with this one. So it changes here. Um, and here are the numbers for this city block. Here are the numbers for, for the, the, this city block. Now, the whole plot gives me the information about my complete model. So if I had 10 city blocks, um, the, the whole plot would show me my complete model, whatever I have put into it and is, is made by modeler. Hope this answers the question. Gasper, uh, please check if, if the, the question is answered. Uh, otherwise, I'm moving on with with other uh, data related stuff, which is here. If you go to tools, open up urban control data table. Uh, this will give you the information about your complete model. So this is a quick way of interacting with uh, all of the data that comes from modeler. We have the data for the buildings, for the complex buildings and so on. And for the complex buildings, you can extend the data so you can see what are the numbers coming out of it. Now, one nice thing about this, this view of the model is that you can sort it here. So you can sort by, let's say, the built area. And then when you click the, the building, it will, be, uh, it will become colored. Uh, it will become selected uh, and vice versa. If you select the building here, it will get selected in the table and you will also see part of which city block is. Uh, but other than that, this data is not uh, modifiable or usable in, in any other ways. But what uh, it gives you here are the check boxes that sometimes you can see also the Excel only. Uh, this is where you also set which is the data that is being sent to Excel. Now to send this data about your model to Excel, uh, you just need to go to extensions, modeler, uh, send modeler data to Excel. What this will do is you will see here, uh, it brings up the Excel file. It has the same name as my SketchUp file. So in this case, it's New York Excel. And what we now have is a direct connection between SketchUp uh, and Modeler with Excel. So you can see basically, actually, let me try to do it this way. Let me get rid of this one. You can see right now here, this looks like pretty much the same as what I've shown you for uh, inside SketchUp. But the thing here is that actually you can now work with this data inside Excel. So uh, 
all the data that comes from modeler goes to modeler live data. And now what I'll do is I'll go to Resi and, and link some data and make some pie charts. And we can also do our own calculations and so on. Residential office hotel. Let's go. Hotel. Uh, hotel. And now what I'll do is I will just link the total gross floor areas. So for the residential, we have it here. Now for the office, we have it here. And then for the hotel, we have the data here. OK, so just quickly putting in some numbers. And what I'll do now is I will insert the uh, pie chart, the donut chart. OK, so now what will happen is when whenever I change the building, you will see that the data here is being updated. So if I change this building, make it a bit smaller, you can see the data here in the chart is being constantly updated. So whenever I change the building or change the land use in this case, to let's go with this one for the hotel, you can see that the chart has been updated instantly and the numbers here are updated. So even if I, for for example, if I need to calculate something that depends on the on the gross floor area, so let's say I need to provide for every uh, hundred square meters of residential area, I need to uh, provide one tree, uh, maybe hundred. Let's go with seventy-five so that it will not be as obvious. So for every seventy-five square meters of residential area, I need to provide one tree. So in this case, we would need to provide. Uh, 111 trees. Now, if I go and change this building back to residential, you will see that in this case, we would need to provide 159 trees. So what I'm trying to say here is that whenever uh, you change something in your SketchUp model with Modeler here, the data is being pushed to Excel and all the formulas that you have added something that is not part of the the initial calculation that already comes with modeler everything is being pushed to excel and then you can you can do whatever calculations uh, you want to do in excel now one thing just to note here is that if you are inside a cell in in excel editing it and then you make some kind of change in in modeler uh, something like that like five Modeler will temporarily freeze. Now, don't don't get scared. Uh, now, a window will open up saying server is busy, and this is because what happened right now is model uh, SketchUp is preventing preventing the inflow of data from SketchUp. So that's why SketchUp is now waiting for Excel to to release this data flow. What I need to do is I just need to exit the editing in Excel, then I can go back to, to SketchUp and go with retry or switch to, and now we are back and everything is good and still working. So uh, this happens when you're in the middle of editing something in Excel. Uh, and if you change your model in SketchUp, SketchUp and Modeler will wait for it until you finish the Excel. OK, this is the Excel functionality. Uh, some questions here, Gasper? Uh, not right now, and I'll let you know. OK, okay. not right now. OK, so with this, I would I would wrap up these uh, capabilities of, of basic modeling and getting the data out of Modeler. Now, what I want to show you also is the capabilities uh, of course, I didn't save the file right now. One thing that you could do with this Excel is you could actually create a template file that you can use for different projects. Because as I've mentioned before, the Excel file is created next to your SketchUp file. And if this file has the same name as your SketchUp file, Modeler will open it. So even if you create a template file that already has some formulas in it and some pie charts and so on, uh, whenever you copy it next to your SketchUp file and name it the same way, uh, Modeler will open it. And, and you can start from there. Um, okay, now 
just want to show you also one of the things that we've added lately to Modeler in case you want to quickly test the FAR limitations and so on of the city blocks. Maybe we have a bit small city blocks right now, uh, but still, nevertheless, let me try it out, is the capability of the generators. So we can quickly generate something uh, not necessarily or, or usually far from something that we could consider a good design, but still something that quickly populates you the city block with a set of buildings uh, that try to get close to the FAR limitation. Now, as I said, right now we are we 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 are working on a quite small city block, so um, we still have some room to to get closer to the FAR. But, and as you can see here, each time that I click on generate button, uh, Modeler will produce me a set of buildings based, based on this grid uh, that, that will try to go close to the FAR. And each time the result is a bit different. Okay, if you need more control over the generator, you can go here to tools, massing generator, and this will bring up a new window where you where you will have a bit more control of what you can do or, or or how the buildings are generated. So let's go here and define that the buildings here should be between 14 and maybe 16 meters and maybe at most 60 meters long. And I also want to define the mix of uses. So the default is the one that is coming through from the uh, from this city block. So that by default, three parts of it will be residential or whatever is set as the default for the city block. And one part of it should be service. So let's see what it generates. So uh, one quarter, closely to one quarter is service and three quarters are residential. Okay. So this is, this is uh, about the generator. Now, one thing that will help you also uh, work more intuitively with Modeler is to understand how these default parameters that I'm constantly mentioning actually work. Uh, basically, what we have in Modeler is, is this hierarchy of parameters. I will show you here the user guide. Um, oh, we need to fix the link, Gasper. If you can <laughs> please remember, uh, obviously, the... Uh, use let go with user guide dot modeler here modeler sketchup user guide in here in the quick start um, we have an image that explains it how how it all works we have this hierarchy of parameters um, the topmost being always the whole plot or our complete model meaning either the city or the district or just a few city blocks. So whatever is the, the, the topmost rule of our model. Then we have the next level are city blocks and beneath the city blocks we have building. Now in this case, we just have two parameters so that it is clearer, right? But all the parameters in Modeler that you can see here, they all work uh, on in the same manner. So. We have, in this case, we have on the whole plot, we set the, the default is residential and four stories. On this city block, we haven't overloaded any of those parameters. So when the building number one, when we place it on this city block, it, it gets the default land use from the whole plot and the number of stories is also not set here. So it also gets it from the whole plot, which is four. So residential and four. While for this building number two, we have set number of stories as two on a building level. So it will not change it wherever we move it. But when we go on and and uh, change uh, where, where, we, where we seek for the land use, it picks it up from the whole plot. So here, how this looks in practice is, if I go here, I will change the default land use of this city block and obviously, you can see which parameter is overloaded by uh, seeing these checkboxes here. These are to denote if something is overloaded or not. So by default, now this city block is service. And let's say by default, the height of stories should be uh, seven. So I've, I've just changed it. 
but now the building has some of the parameters overloaded so i'm just turning it off uh and in here so when i move the building from one area to another you can see that it adapts this is because right now the building doesn't have any parameter set so everything that defines it is pulled from the city block now if i go here and say this building actually i want it to be nine stories high no matter where we move it i can do that now it only adapts the land uses okay i hope this is clear if not please uh, type in the question into chat window and gasper will let me know now this gives me the ability to quickly adjust to the rules of the city block but also i can go beyond what 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 is allowed or what is the default so even if this building here is not allowed i'm now exceeding the permitted building height uh, even if it's not allowed i can still do it i can i can create this kind of of needle tower which are now appearing for example in new york okay now of course having it read here means that i will need to talk to the city and convince them why this kind of development is good here and then we can discuss how we can make it happen if 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 the developer wants to build something like that. Now, the last thing that I want to show you in this model, because we are running out of time and I just want to show you a bit of GIS uh, is the phasing capabilities, okay? So one thing that uh, also regarding the workflow in, in SketchUp is that you can freely work with layers, meaning that you can quickly create a few design options and and then quickly compare them so what i'll do here is um i'll just move these buildings to alternative one alternative one um tag alternative one and i'll hide them and right now what happened is also you can see that the city block all of the values of the city blocks of this city block are now zero if i turn it on the the numbers reappear again this is another important concept in modeler which is modeler only calculates what you see in your model so if you hide the layer or just the building it will not be part of calculation anymore now to to speed things up i will just generate something quickly here just so that we have uh, another alternative so alt 2 now i guess you already know where i'm aiming at Okay, so here, if I turn this one off, uh, what I want to do now is I want to quickly compare these two options. Um, what I'll do is I'll go to view, animation, add scene, and then also here, I will turn this one off, turn another one on, and add another scene. Now, this gives me the capability of quickly changing one alternative or another. You can see that the numbers are also updated. So, it gives me the possibility to quickly switch from one to another uh, design alternative inside the same model, okay? And one thing that I want to also show you here is the capability of, of phasing, if this is something that you need. So let's say these two buildings will be built in 2025. Uh, now, at the moment, nothing happened except the development timeline, which we have here at the bottom. I will pull it up set itself to 2025 meaning that uh we now have the option to to switch this uh and just use the development timeline to to bring the buildings up and let's say this building will be built in um 2027 okay now it disappeared because our timeline is in 2025 and as you can see modeler automatically adjust adjusts the 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 numbers here so that they match whatever is the span that that you have set okay and again here the same as previously with with the uh, design alternatives if you switch this it shows you that in 2020 25 the far will be almost two then when the new building will be added it will now even exceed and it will become 3.4. Okay, I'm speeding up a bit to, to catch one hour. 
the last thing that I, <laughs> I I've said this already, yeah, but just to quickly show you, I see that I'm now lacking 580 parking spaces. Okay, what I want to do now is I want to actually I will change this one to a garage. So right now, if I have something like that, you can see that we are still lacking, lacking 550 parking spaces. What I'll do is I will change this building from residential to parking. And now I'm lacking only 180 parking spaces. This is because I have changed the land use, which is now parking. And now instead of requiring this, this building doesn't require parking spaces, but it actually provides them. Okay. So that's why the number is higher, but maybe I don't want to do it like this. Now, one thing that you can also note here is that we are still, it is still being accounted for uh, FAR and other numbers. This is because the parking right now is accounted uh, for in total. So what I want to do is I want to just calculate the parking that I'm getting out of this building while the gross floor area and everything else is not being accounted for. So, so you can see that right now it dropped the FAR from 3.5 to 2.2. Again, I will just switch it. You can see that city block now is red, 3.2, and now to 2.2. Okay, now what I can do is also I can move this one underground and make it something like that. It will work better. And now if we make this size of the garage, actually maybe we can make it just three stories or even two. Yeah, now let's go with three. So we have some more spaces than needed. Uh, we have the size of the garage here under the city block that provides enough parking spaces and actually it has 114 more than there are actually needed. Okay, now to wrap it up in a few minutes, um, Gasper, do we have some question? No, not right now. Okay, and there is some noise uh, getting from uh, your background, I guess. Um, okay, so here GIS data, this is just to quickly show you. And now if you are interested after this webinar, uh, I'm happy to show you more also about the GIS. Just get in touch with us and we can then schedule one-on-one -on -one call. But I believe also we can provide you with the free five-seat demo license. This is something that's available to all the attendees of, of the webinar. So you just need, I believe at the end, there will be, uh, uh, um, uh, you, you can enter your details and we will follow up with the demo license for you. So is that correct, Gasper? Can you confirm it? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll post, there will be a button with the link where you can send, or just send us an email at support at Modelur um, to, to request a five seat demo license for the whole team. And okay. follow up. Yeah. Okay. So right now, what I I have here is geolocated data. Again, I could use the OpenStreetMap importer, but for this city, I have some shape files available and GeoJSON. So what I want to do is I just want to quickly bring in some buildings. Obviously, right now the mapping is already there. Uh, in case you are starting with this, you need to do the mapping. So you need to map from the attributes of your shapefile or GeoJSON to what modeler understands as a parameter. And once this mapping is done, you can export it so that you can reuse it at some later point. And then once the mapping is set, you can just go here and import GIS layer, which will quickly generate you the buildings. And now all of these buildings that we have generated right now, they are, they are actually modeler parametric buildings, meaning that they still respond to all the parameters and all that I've been showing you previously, but they are basically uh, existing city. This can be very useful also to determine what is the what is the existing uh, what are the existing capacities of the city. And I'll go here map also the context because this one right now you can see that here instead of importing as modular buildings, we are importing as simple building volumes. Uh, this one is quicker because it doesn't generate the, the modular buildings, 
but just the building volume. So there are no calculations behind it, but still uh, it gives you the, the uh, some feeling of the context. And this way you can also import the city blocks. Again, import GIS layer. It gives us the city blocks. And now this is practically the same as if we would if we would create this from from scratch by hand right so here i will just turn off the location snapshot so you can even see some of the city blocks here became red meaning that the city has a problem with the data because obviously here the buildings are taller than 25 meters so in this case it can be used as something that uh, helps cities fix the data if if this is the case maybe not 400 or the last one that I want to import here is the trees. If this is something that is available, you can also import the trees of the city and let's go here, import GIS layer. Modeler comes with a library of trees that are most commonly used in urban environments. So uh, you can get, if you have this data available, you can map that one also. Yeah. So. With this, I would conclude the webinar. Thank you for, for joining us. Gasper, do you want to add something? No, uh, all good. Just email us for for a yeah. demo license and we'll follow back. So you okay. get a, a longer period uh, to try it out. Okay, perfect. So yeah, again, uh, thank you for joining us and hope to hear from you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.